Right, and um, I'd say you know one of the questions for me today is right, we know how to do that, right? I mean that's that's no problem. You just take the people and you replace them with computer processes. It sounds like maybe just artificial intelligence or something like that. So done. Uh, well, actually, obviously not, right? I mean, um, and I want to talk about some of the ways in which this is a, a rather troubled transition um, by making fun of a game for which I actually have a lot of fondness, which is um, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Um, it may seem a little weird to talk about a game from 2003, right? That's ancient history in game terms. Um, but part of the reason I want to talk about this game, rather than say Mass Effect, which is um, by the same lead writer from the same company four years later, is because the, actually the narrative structure of Knights of the Old Republic is more ambitious than things like Mass Effect. In fact, you might see something like Mass Effect as a backing off from some of the ambitions of Knights of the Old Republic for reasons that might become clear as I talk. So let me just give you a little vignette of me playing Knights of the Old Republic. I'm on Dantooine, and I'm traveling south, and I come to a compound, right? So this is the compound of the Sandral family. Their son, Cassus, is missing, and they have kidnapped the son of another family, Shen Matali, in response. And then in sort of typically Shakespearean fashion, their daughter Rahasia has fallen in love with Shen. And I have decided to enable their forbidden love. And so um, I'm going to show you a little gameplay video of me doing that. So first, a little of that statistical combat I talked about. Now notice that that really wasn't about reaction times. Uh, is the, is the video sort of legible from back there? Should we turn off more lights? What do you think? So here I'm getting experience points, right? The kinds of things that I can expend later to improve my character. Um, there's a lot of movement through space that you'll notice in this video. Uh, but now I'm going to discover the daughter and speak with her. So here are my options, right? And when I click on one of them, that click is actually the act of saying the thing, and she responds. Tell Shed I will meet you outside the gates. I will wait as long as I can, but you must hurry. Okay, so I must hurry. Okay, and that, the journal has been updated, right? The journal is one of the replacements for the dungeon master I'll talk about. I've gotten experience points. I'm figuring out where I need to go. I need to hurry. Here is in the journal, right? It says, okay, here's the current state of this part of the story, this active quest. I have to get him out of there. Now, uh, I may need to hurry, but first I need to loot the room because these games are kleptomaniacal, right? Um, and you know, this is another one of the traditions. <laughs> Okay, so once I figure out where I need to go in space, right, so here I am sort of pointed down this hallway. I know I need to go back through that security room where we had the battle. And here I come upon Shen. You're back. Have you spoken to Rahasia? I don't have any option of what to say. You're not just telling me what I want to hear, but I'll have to take that chance. Hurry then. We must not keep Rahasia waiting. Okay, now through the magic of editing, we're going to skip the loading screen. Shen, you're safe. Rahasia, oh, thank goodness you managed to escape. It was all thanks to this kind Jedi that we managed to get this far at all. I thank you, Jedi, for all that you have done for us. Now, I have different sorts of things I can say in response, right? So I can angle for a reward. I, can... I know that you must have gone to great personal risk to get us out of the Sandral State undetected. And again, all right, so I'm characterizing myself through the choices I make. <laughs> now, I want you to pay attention to what this guy in green says in the upcoming conversation. There you are, Shen. Father. Mr. Matali. Rahesha. Father. Mr. Sandro. <laughs> you <laughs> Allah! <laughs> I knew this was all your doing. I knew you had captured my son. 
You had taken my Cassus from me long before that. You started it. I don't want to hear any of your excuses. Now I will get revenge for your transgressions. Now again, I can try to escalate the situation, right? Or I can try to defuse it. Listen to her father. Why should I listen to the Jedi? All you want is to remain with that sandral harlot. My daughter is not a harlot. That goes on for a while. <laughs> we want to live alone away from you. You, you insolent boy. If you want to live alone, then so be it. I disown you. Never set foot in my house again. That seems pretty clear, right? Never set foot in my house again? You will not leave with this, this Matale boy. I am, Father, and you can't stop me. We're leaving for the Enclave. You foolish girl. Okay, so they run off to live in the Jedi Enclave, presumably happily ever after. And then, um, in my version, or at least that's what they do in my version, right? And, um... After they move off to the Jedi Enclave, I go and travel north and explore some of the area I haven't been to. And I visit this estate, which turns out to be the estate of Shen's father, the guy in green that I was just talking to. And I have what I can only characterize as a, a rather odd conversation with him. <laughs> you have come from the Jedi Council. Master Matali wishes to speak. I will inform him that you are here. Remain at this location until he arrives. My protocol droid tells me you are here on behalf of the Council. Beginning to think my demands had been ignored. Though I think your time would be better spent interrogating the Sandals <laughs> as to the whereabouts of my son Shen. This seems pretty odd. I don't have any way to respond by saying, didn't we just see him run off to the Enclave? I already told my story to the Council. Why did they not inform you of my circumstances? I did not expect such incompetence from the Jedi, but I shall repeat the tale once more. Many years ago, I brought my family here to Dantine to escape the crush of humanity. On the Obviously, Nurik, the unscrupulous head of the Sandal clan, has abducted my son in retaliation for the destruction of his droids. Now again, I don't seem to have any way of responding that makes Why sense. The council insist on stalling. The life of my son is at stake. Is it possible? Yes. I am a man of the world, Jedi. I know how things are done. Okay, so this goes on, right. I have another opportunity to characterize myself. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Knights of the Old Republic, right? So another thing that happens is I find the body of Cassis Sandral, right? The, the son who originally went missing that started the whole thing. And um, he is not killed by the rival family. He died in a horrible archaeology accident. And so I um, pick up his... Um, his journal and I decide to take it to his family. I assume they would be interested in the contents of his journal, but when I get to their compound, it's permanently closed and there's no explanation, right? So one issue is that things that seem to have a lot of narrative probability behind them are cut off. Another kind of problem is exposed when I visit uh, planets in an unexpected order, apparently, which is a neat trick given there are only like four of them. And um, I have very strange conversations with a character named Jolie Bindo after he joins my party. In particular, he spends almost all of his conversation darkly hinting at the things that were dramatically revealed right before we met. Right. <laughs> And then, um, more generally, I'd say, when I use my spatial freedom, the narrative structure's inflexibility is often revealed. And I'd say there's a broader way of looking at that, which is that the underlying system doesn't produce the intended audience experience. And maybe you see where we're going here, right? Um, 
we're going to a very familiar